and welcome to the first video of the platforming tool. So in this first part, we're going to create the base setup. What we already need at the beginning is some data. So the tool works that you input certain shapes like boxes, and from the boxes, it will then generate a certain 3D platform shape. So we're going to start out by having a block out of this. So I'm just going to place a box. I'm going to inside the box. We're going to go here to our editing mode, and we're going to start to edit the box a bit. First thing that I want to do is I can probably just increase the scale. I'm just going to say 10. You can, for example, make this a bit more flat. You can do some rotations or scale it a bit. So this is my first shape. Then I'm going to go to my box, hold the Alt key to make a copy. And we're going to make another box here, uh, for example, somewhere on the side like so. So with that in place, we then merge the results. We type in merge node. So we have now these two nodes over here. And this is, for example, my uh, base input. So at later stages, I will play around with it a bit more, but this is now for testing and setting up our first part. So after that is merged, uh, I basically would place a no note here. And this is actually to remind that, that later on, this is actually my input. So I'm just going to type an input here. Then after that, what I will do is actually Boolean this together. Uh, you can also do a voxel or remeshing step, but I will just do a Boolean. So we can just plug in the shapes and we're going to say union. This will actually merge all the shapes. Once that is done, uh, I will actually do a for loop. So the reason why I will do a loop is if you have, for example, a box here that is, uh, for example, on the side here, but it's not directly attached to another box, we do actually a loop for each unique piece. So this is loop one. This is, for example, then loop two. So for my case, I just uh, start simple by just seeing as one piece. So what we can do is we can use the loop, which uh, says for each piece. So it will look at, is this piece fully connected to each other? Since we did the Boolean, this means, of course, this is fully connected. And we're going to make this a lot bigger because we want to make some logic for the system over here. So the first thing to do is I want to subtract a two dimensional shape from this. We can do this by using the extract silhouette node. This is a lapse node. So with this lapse node, we can just plug in in our input, for example. And then we have to say from what axis. So in this case, we want to have the Y axis since this is like the up axis. So now we have like a perfectly fine 3D shape of that. Then next step would then be also making a fuse. So this is just to be sure that in case we are maybe having some more complicated data, we can then quickly just fuse things together. And we probably want to increase this to maybe 0.2 so 0.2 and again this is mainly when for example if my box would be rotated like this it will sort of like fuse to small areas together so we have like more consistency and less of like smaller parts here and there then this is now in place uh, we can always do a match node to check if we are actually consistent with like the location so we're going to use this as input. Our second input is our base shape. And what we can do here is with this node, we can then match the location. So in this case, it's not doing that much, uh, but we can always go back and control the Y positioning here. So right now the Y position is in the center. We can all say to minimum. So it will pick the lowest part of this input. We can also say maximum, we'll pick then the highest part. So center by default is pretty good, uh, but sometimes you maybe want to tweak this in case if your if your input shape if your input shapes are not consistent then you might want to change this we can also do for example add normals already here so we can do a normal step we can already think about uv'ing so this will actually be my base geometry that i generate for example here uv um, what i can recommend doing is click on initialize and then we have like an automatic uv here so this will probably be stretched. So I'm going to go to the transformation and I'm going to type in a consistent value of, for example, maybe five. Let's see how well that works over time. Um, we don't have the translation and rotations, but for now that's okay. So I can now go to my uh, UV view over here. And we can see that we have a nice uh, UV in here. And I think it might be uh, inverted so we're actually going to need to rotate 
so I can actually now see that they are not mirrored anymore. So in this case I had to do a minus 180 degrees. So this is my base geometry. So from this I want to do then multiple things as well. Um, I can now calculate a border, which I will cover in the next videos. And I can also build a variation on the planks on what you are seeing right here. So right now we have like pretty default geometry with just like the UV on it. So that's pretty basic. So we want to build in like a switch node. Uh, so a switch node. And we want to then switch between, for example, different styles. And this is something that you can build on top of. If you have like other IDs, you can start building on top of that. So a very interesting thing to do here is to use something which is called a poly expand 2D. So this, of course, like it says in the naming, works for 2D shapes. So we, what we currently have is a two-dimensional shape. So plug in our shape into this. And if we check the wireframe, uh, we will have like this border. But what we can actually do is we can play around with the output setting and switch this to surface. Now we need to push then the offset value. And as you can see, we can create these quite interesting shapes. Like you've seen here, like these are quite interesting shapes to look at. Now, what I don't need is for example, the outside. I don't want to extend the platform. So what you see here is now these interesting shapes. This will create a nice breakup. You sometimes might want to switch this mode to this part here that can hit give better results. Now, after that is done, uh, maybe we can do another normal because I don't think we have like normals here currently. Now we might also again want to do a few step. Since we did the poly expand, it might actually be good to do a few a few note after this as well. Then I want to get the border of this plane. So we're gonna say group, we're gonna say edges, we're gonna disable the base group, we're gonna say edges mode, and we're gonna say uh, get the shared unshared edges, which is just basically getting the border. And I will name this border as well, so border. I can also later then use this if I need something like specific data. Uh, we can also create a group for the seams. So we're going to create group. Uh, this is then for the UVing, because the UVing of this, we can do something a bit more special. Uh, so we can say uh, seams, we can make this as an edge mode. And we're basically going to select everything. So everything you see can be a seam. So each single polygon or angon will be like a unique uh, UV shell. And that's now placed the UV node. And we're going to use the UV flatten node here. So UV flatten. So if you plug this in, uh, by default, you probably just get a UV like this. So we want to say that we created a sort of like custom seams. And we want to now use that. So we want to say here, in this node, use my seam. So use my seam group. So you can see that they are sort of like now separated, but they're still orientated and located in this very specific location. So we want to disable here uh, layout constraints. Now we can see that they're actually being packed in the spacing. Another feature we can try to use here in the flatten node is to actually try to align uh, the V shells on a certain axis. So we can go here to align the shells. We can, for example, add something and we can say, uh, do align based on something. So I can, for example, start selecting stuff here. And then as you can see, like it tries to align that UV part. So of course I'm not gonna like manually select it. So what we can try to do is we can try to use the border group. Um, before we can use that border group, we actually need to do a promotion of the border group. So group promote going to place it over here and we want to promote this group node to a vertice group. So here we're going to say promote the border group. We can also, for example, say that we want to still keep that the original group. There are also other settings you can play around with to get maybe better results, but be careful because for example, if I toggle this on, yeah, you will see that I will remove some of those uh, results. So now we have that border. We can go here to our UV flatten again. And here we can now add one more and we can specifically say to use the border information. So that will help somewhat with the rotations, but for some pieces, it still has difficulty to know how to uh, orientate them. It's not perfect necessarily. And, and it is also giving you a warning that it has, for example, multiple information and it's not sure how to then rotate this along an axis. For now, I'm going to leave this as it is. I might jump into back this later, but I want to mainly focus on getting a new style. Now we can, for example, do a bevel. And what we can do 
is we can just bevel the shape like so and we can create like one single line in the middle you can also see that when we have like this uh, crossing of tree we create this quite unique geometry shape and i want to actually have a simplified version of that so we're going to go to shapes and we're going to say solid so now it's actually like simplifying that area of it so now we have that in place and what could be great is we want to transform uh, that middle line so we're going to place a transform and what we can do here is what if we call that seams group and what if we drag it down and you can see that we are targeting maybe i should hide the uv here for a quick so we are targeting that middle line now so we probably want to maybe do like a normal pass here again and this way we can create some nice unique tiles with some base uv pass as well so let's make some more room like this in those different styles so we can just change styles and afterwards what we can do is we can uh, make a group and we can call this uh, for example the planks so later on if i want to do something else with the data i know the difference between planks and for example when i create a border i will also make then a group for border data so this is then my current result here so now i have the switch node here in place to change styles let's go back to our main part here and for example rotate the box so you can see that this works pretty well so we create these quite unique types of tiles so of course this is a quite specific shape or tiles uh, and you want to then maybe tweak this to what you would like to see uh, another quick trick here is we can basically now play around with this input so what if we for example do a Vorian Noin fracturing so let's grab that node let's grab our plank and what we need to do is we also need to do a scattering pass so we want to scatter on the plank a couple points so here we scatter a bunch of points and now we plug that in the Vorian so you will see that if you view the wireframe it, it will break up the planks into multiple shells uh, we probably want to disable to create like interior faces and so on so i want to disable some of these settings and we basically now can override our poly expand with this information and we basically then have a pattern like this so we created our own custom for noi pattern thing uh, we can always go back to the scattering uh we can just play around with the seat so again it all depends on is this the style i want in my project in my game so i'm just like giving you some ideas here on on some possibilities with that so if you can define here a specific breaking up of shapes you can create some quite unique results so i'm gonna leave that on the side here but you can also for example build in a switch node like we have here to switch between again the type of patterning now before i end this video we might come back to that uving part so i used to uving flatten here and i want to have like a bit better results so a way to fix this is to actually make a loop around that so the uv flatten in this case with the vertex straightening with the vertex aligning part uh, it actually prefers a bit to have like primitive per primitive so what I'm going to do is, um, in this case, I'm just going to do for each primitive. And we're going to just like put that note in there. So when we now go to the UV view, uh, we can see that it actually now works a bit better. That UVs are now respecting that alignment. So if I check like one of them, it's like perfectly aligning. Uh, we can, for example, go over each single pass. So you can see that everyone has in alignment. So sometimes it's at the top. And sometimes it will be at the bottom so this is at aligned at the top then this one is for example aligned at the bottom so that works now after that step you might want to like do a proper layout so we're going to use the layout node so uv layout it's not necessary if you're already happy with this result uh, but it might be useful to just plug in the layout node but you notice that it will actually then re-rotate some of the parts so we don't want that uh, a way to do that is by the axis alignment here just put it to none and now we actually have like that perfect alignment that i made here so if i go back to my uh, 3d view 
we can see it's now aligned to the border. What you might notice here as well is, of course, uh, the different uh, texel density. So some parts have more pixels of the texture, some parts are having less. We also want to enable the toggle saying scale islands to their surface. And this will actually make sure that we have more consistency there. So now we have a perfectly aligned UV according to the border space here. So you can see that works pretty well uh, in this case. So this is a, another way of doing this a bit more properly. And we can just plug this in over here. So it's not going to fully work anymore, as you can see. That's because of the loop. So when we do a loop on the primitives, it will actually break the connection. So as you can see here, it will actually break the connection. So again, what we need to do is building a fuse node. So we need to make sure the pieces are fused back together or welded back together. It will not like interrupt with our UV. So as you can see, like that is working now again by just using the fuse net. So we have like this part here and there. So I can now go back, start uh, grabbing the box, playing around with that. And you can see that this updates pretty fast uh, with that with that UV logic in there as well. So that was it for this video. So I showed you the base setup here for the platform, mainly actually for making planks. So how the planks shape or geometry was made. In next videos, I'm going to talk about how we can make a border around this so we have some models that we want to use or instance those models to make a border i will talk about that in the next videos so hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching